What's good, everyone? Welcome back to the Mayo Media Network. My name's Griffin Swanson, and today I'm going to be breaking down the Monday night football game between the New York Giants and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Got a couple of prize picks here that I like for this game, and then we're going to dive into my spreadsheet, breaking down the DraftKings showdown slate. But before we do that, if you could like this video here and subscribe to the channel, I would greatly appreciate that. Y'all probably know this by now, but if not, the Mayo Media Network has football content coming out Monday through Sunday throughout the remainder of the season, so don't miss out on any of that. And for you podcast people, you can always head over to the Spotify pods or Apple pods and find all of the content there. And while you're over there, leave a five-star review. That certainly helps as well. But with that being said, let's dive into this Monday night game here, kicking it off with a couple of prize picks that I like. All right, so I'm over on the prizepicks.com website here now. And for starters, I want to mention this. If you have not signed up for prize picks yet and are perhaps interested in doing so, you can use the promo code MMN, which stands for Mayo Media Network, and get up to a $100 match deposit upon signing up. Again, you don't have to put 100 bucks in. You want to put in 50, they'll match 50 you want to put in 20 they'll match 20 as long as you're using that promo code mmn you can get up to a 100 match deposit so if you plan on signing up make sure you take advantage of that with that being said i got two props here that i like for this monday night game and they're both going to be receiving yard props so scrolling down here to the bottom first one that i like is kenny galladay over 41 and a half receiving yards i think that number's too low i know he's been injured throughout most of the season but prior to his injury and his first First four healthy games he hit the over at this number of 41 and a half in three of four games the one game where he didn't get there he had 38 receiving yards he has one more catch in that game he likely hits the over and I'm looking at a couple of projection sites here one has him at 55 yards the other at 62 well above this number as well and actually on pro football focus they're giving him the best wide receiver cornerback matchup in this Monday night game over D Delaney, they're giving Galladay a 99.9 .9 matchup advantage out of 100 literally the best that you can get and the game script here probably works in Galladay's favor as well where the Giants are likely playing from behind having to throw the ball a little bit more and so like I said I think this number is just a bit too low and Galladay hits the over at 41 and a half receiving yards and then the other prop that I like here in this game is going to be Rob Gronkowski over 24 and a half receiving yards I think that number's too low as well I, it's a very similar situation here with Kenny Galladay whereas Gronk is missed most of the season due to an injury but in his first three healthy games to start the season he absolutely smashed this number here at 24 and a half hitting 39 55 and 90 receiving yards in his first three games he was averaging seven targets per game and averaging 11 and a half yards per reception so if he gets three four catches in this game I think he clears that number assuming he can just get right back to his normal workload he should smash that number but even if he is limited I think he could realistically hit the over on one or two catches. Again, looking at a couple of projection sites here, they got him around 39 receiving yards, well above this number at 24 and a half, in a good matchup at home against a pretty bad New York Giants defense as well. So to recap here, the two props that I like are Rob Gronkowski over 24 and a half receiving yards and Kenny Galladay over 41 and a half. We can approach this two different ways, the flex play or the power play. If you go the power play route, you will need all of your picks to hit but it does increase the payout and again for those of you who have not signed up for prize picks yet and are perhaps interested in doing so make sure you take advantage of that promo code mmn which stands for mayo media network and you'll get up to a 100 match deposit but all right time to dive into this spreadsheet here breaking down this DraftKings showdown slate as always we'll start in the top left hand corner with those vegas odds you can see the bucks are heavy home favorites here sitting on a money line of minus 490 they're also 10 and a half point favorites in this game as well with an over under of 50 points definitely could see a lot of points scored in this game in general I think the implied total right now for the Buccaneers is around 30 30 and a half points and then we got the showdown stats here from 2020 always got those listed out let's pop over to this other sheet and this is in regard to the top one percent of showdown lineups 
from last year. So I'm going to go over these pretty quickly here, take a screenshot of them, do what you want with these stats. But number one, 92% of all showdown lineups rostered at least one quarterback. Of the top 1% of lineups from last year, 96% had a quarterback rostered as well. Number two, 33% of all lineups rostered a wide receiver at captain. Of the top 1% of showdown lineups, 31.5% had a wide receiver in the captain spot as well. Number three, 57% of the top 1% of lineups rostered a captain from the team favored to win. So in this example here, Tampa Bay Buccaneers captain. Number four, run it back. An opposing quarterback, wide receiver, or tight end was included in 88.9% percent of winning lineups that rostered a quarterback wide receiver or tight end from the other team at captain number five ignore defense and kickers in the captain spot that obviously worked out in the thursday night game with the patriots defense but very rarely does that work only 1.1 percent of the time in the top one percent of lineups from last year and the number six there do not play more than two kickers or defenses in the same lineup usually one is fine. With all that said, let's dive into some of my favorite DraftKings plays here, kicking it off with the captains, and as always, I'm going to list out a captain from both sides of this game, starting on the Buccaneers side of things here, and look, this Buccaneers offense is so good in general. We could go a number of different ways in the captain spot. You could just go with Brady if you wanted to, hoping he's spreading the ball out to all of his wide receivers. You go with Mike Evans, who leads the team in touchdowns. You go with Lenny Fournette, who's been a focal point in this offense all year long, racking up DraftKings points in a number of different ways, or go with Gronk, who's a bit too cheap in my opinion, and has nice upside himself. I ultimately landed on Chris Godwin here. He's just projecting slightly above those guys that I mentioned outside of Tom Brady, but all the wide receivers, tight end, and Lenny Fournette, Godwin's coming in just slightly above right now, and he actually leads all pass catchers with a 21% target share this year, and I was actually surprised by this as well. He leads the team in red zone targets at 23.8%. I would have thought that Mike Evans had that on lock, but in fact, it's actually been Chris Godwin. And per PFF, Pro Football Focus, they're giving Godwin the best wide receiver cornerback matchup of any Bucks wide receiver on this Monday night game, going up against Giants cornerback Darnay Holmes, who ranks 98 out of 119 graded cornerbacks this year, so Godwin should have his way with them. Like I said, we could probably put in a number of different guys in the captain spot on the Buccaneers side of things, but based off of the target, target share that he's been getting this year and the matchup he has on Monday night. I lean towards Godwin over some of those other guys. And then on the Giants side of things here, I like Kenny Galladay. Talked about him during the prize pick segment of this video. And so I'm going to reiterate a number of the things that I mentioned there as to why I like him in the captain spot as well. For starters, coming off of that bye in week 10, this should be the healthiest that Galladay has been dating back to week one. You love to see that. And he's got a great matchup to kind of have that boom game that we really haven't seen from him as a New York giant in this matchup here against Bucks cornerback D Delaney. You know, PFF is actually giving Galladay the best wide receiver cornerback matchup overall in this Monday night game, giving him a 99.9 .9 matchup advantage out of 100. That's legit the best you can get on PFF. Delaney ranks 113 out of 119 graded cornerbacks this year. I mean, literally bottom of the barrel. And Galladay actually has a 5-inch height advantage in this matchup over Delaney, which probably plays into why he has a 99.9 .9 matchup advantage, but that's perfect for Galladay's game. Ever since he's come into the league, he's made a living off of going up and winning those contested catches. So assuming he could see 5-plus targets in this game, Galladay could have a really nice night in this matchup here against D. Delaney. Now, hopping on down here to the flex plays, we have to talk about Tom Brady. He's actually leading the entire slate in median projections. So if you want to put him in the captain spot, absolutely think that makes sense. Most of his starting weapons are back this week here, getting Gronk back. Really, the only one who's still out is Antonio Brown. So he could definitely spread the ball out a lot in this game and has that 30-plus draft game point upside. So again, you could put him in the captain spot, you could put him in the flex play, and a number of guys that you can stack him with. And again, I always go back to this first statistic from 2020 of the top 1% of lineups, 96% of those had a quarterback rostered, and Brady is certainly the better quarterback of the two between him and Daniel Jones in this Monday night game. Next guy I got there then is Mike Evans of the Buccaneers, and as I mentioned earlier when I was talking 
about Chris Godwin. There's a number of different Bucks players we could put in the captain spot. That includes Mike Evans as well. He leads all Buccaneers this year in air yards at 30.6%. That doesn't surprise me because Brady loves to throw the deep ball to Mike Evans. He leads the team in touchdowns as well with nine this year. And he's really that type of player that can score a touchdown at any point in a game, largely due to Brady throwing the deep ball his way. He's actually shown a really safe floor this year as well, scoring fewer than 12 DraftKings points in just two games with an upside of 30 plus DraftKings points. So I like him as a flex play, like him in the captain spot. Evans is going to be a focal point in this offense on Monday night for the Bucks. Now, speaking of focal points in this Buccaneers offense, Leonard Fournette is going to be one of those guys as well. Just seems to progressively get better with each and every game this year, and the Buccaneers seem to trust him more with each and every game as well. He's now averaging 12 and a half rushing attempts per game and 5.3 targets involved in all aspects of this Buccaneers offense and can really rack up DraftKings points in a number of different ways. He's actually averaging 15.4 DraftKings points per game and another Buccaneers player here who has 30 plus DraftKings point upside. Now unfortunately we can't play all of these top tier Buccaneers players in the same lineup as great as it would be to roll out Brady with Evans and Godwin and then mix in Leonard Fournette as well. It's too expensive to do that so we'll have to pick and choose which top tier Buccaneers guys we want in this game but all of them have shown solid floors all year long with that 30 plus DraftKings point upside and have a great matchup here to do so again against a Giants defense who really hasn't been all that great this year. We then got a couple of Giants players here that we're going to talk about starting with Daniel Jones who has been a bit boom or bust this year but I always go back to this first stat from 2020 of the top 1% of lineups. 96% of them had a quarterback rostered. Now look Tom Brady is probably that quarterback to roster in 9 out of 10 games but you never know with these showdowns you could get that one game that you're looking for where Daniel Jones does outperform Tom Brady and he's got some nice rushing upside to his game as well. We saw it a lot more from him earlier this year compared to as of late but hopefully he gets back to that here on Monday night coming off of the bye. You know earlier this year he put up performances of 22, 29, and 30 DraftKings points in three of his first four games where he was running the ball a lot more and now I understand the Buccaneers defense has been one of the best rush defenses in the league over the past couple of seasons but considering Daniel Jones has it in his arsenal it gives him a little extra upside. We then got Kadarius Toney there for the New York Giants who should act as wide receiver number two in this Monday night game behind Kenny Galladay but above Darius Slayton. We don't have Sterling Shepard once again in this game who's out with an injury and the Giants need to find ways to get Tony the ball. He's so good in open space, great after the catch. The way he starts and stops and takes off at full speed is actually incredible to watch. Hopefully we see that on Monday night. He's been a bit boomer bust this year, largely due to the inconsistent numbers and volume thrown his way, but assuming he can see five, six targets in this game, he could have himself a nice night. We've seen a really great ceiling out of Tony already, who's just a rookie this year, but he scored 32 DraftKings points back in week five against the Dallas Cowboys. So the upside is definitely there with this guy. He didn't even score a touchdown in that game. And at $6,800 here, like I said, if he can get five, six targets, targets, he can absolutely meet value and maybe even smash it against his secondary for the Buccaneers, who has been a bit susceptible at times. Now, one Giants player who was starting to play better and find his game prior to the bye in Week 10 was Evan Ingram, the tight end for the Giants, playing his best football, really, scoring touchdowns in back-to-back -back games and hitting double-digit DraftKings points in three straight games. Now, he might only see three, four targets in this game here, but at $6,600, I wouldn't mind that that, especially considering they are looking to him a little bit more in the red zone now. Uh, he just wasn't great to start the season. This is a guy who's battled a lot of injuries throughout the course of his career. So hopefully having a bye week here, it allows him to kind of refresh and get right back to his game that we saw prior to the bye, which again was his best football that he was playing all year long. And speaking of tight ends there, gotta talk about Gronk, who's coming back from injury himself. You can put him in the captain spot, like I said, so many different guys on the buck side of things that we could put in there, but Gronk here at $6,200 definitely caught my eye. I almost highlighted him over Chris Godwin, actually, assuming he gets back to his regular role here 
in week 11. I think that would be the only cause for concern is do they ease Gronk in coming back from injury? But if they don't, this is a guy who was seeing seven targets per game, 61 receiving yards per game, and averaging 1.3 touchdowns throughout the first three games of the season. And 1.3 touchdowns means he scored four touchdowns in his first three games. But this is a guy who Brady obviously looks to once they get in the red zone area. So it's $6,200 here. I love the upside with Gronk. I know he only played three games, but in those three games, he was averaging 19.5 DraftKings points per game. Not bad at all for a guy priced here in the low 6K range. Now, I often debate with myself whether or not I should be highlighting kickers and defenses on these showdown spreadsheets. And then I look at some of these numbers and go, you know what? They're worth talking about here. Now, I could certainly highlight a fourth string wide receiver or a backup running back that might only play 25 to 50% of the offensive of snaps but have the potential of scoring a touchdown but do we honestly know if a fourth string wide receiver or a backup running back are going to score on any given game the answer is probably no we're really grasping at straws there so I look at a guy like Graham Gano the kicker for the New York Giants and go you know what this guy's been very consistent this year hitting 19 of 21 field goals averaging about 10 DraftKings points per game and shown really solid upside in four games this year out of nine he's hit 11 11, 12, 15, and 22 DraftKings points. Uh, those are a lot better numbers than you're going to get from a fourth string wide receiver or a backup running back in most given games. Like I said, there's certainly going to be outlier games where that fourth stringer or fifth stringer comes through and ends up winning a showdown for you. But in terms of consistency, I look to a guy like Graham Gano and go, you know what? This guy has 22 plus DraftKings point upside as well. Why not mention him? And then to wrap it up there, I got Darius Slayton of the New York Giants, who should act as wide receiver number three in this offense on Monday night, behind Kadarius Toney and Kenny Galladay, but I don't mind him at that price tag of $3,200. He's actually seeing a 23% share of the team's air yards this year, and a 13% target share. Not great numbers by any means, but not bad at all for a guy priced in the low 3K range. And like I said, this Tampa Bay secondary has been susceptible at times this year, allowing 37 7.8 DraftKings points per game two opposing wide receivers the 10th most in the NFL and the game script is playing out toward the Giants are playing from behind likely having to throw the ball more which will obviously benefit all the pass catchers so like I said wide receiver number three you know might be one of those scenarios where he doesn't play a full set of snaps but at $3,200 here I think he's seen enough volume to where he can certainly meet value at that price tag all right everyone that is gonna wrap up this video here for the Monday night football slate as always thank y'all for taking the time out of your day to watch the content on the Mayo Media Network. If you haven't already, like this video here and subscribe to the Mayo Media Network. Like I said, they got football content coming out Monday through Sunday throughout the remainder of the season, amongst much other content as well, tackling multiple different sports. So don't miss out on any of that. And again, for those of you who do want to sign up for prize picks, you can always use the promo code MMN, which stands for Mayo Media Network, and get up to a $100 match deposit. But let's enjoy this Monday night game here, folks. Let's win a little money as well. I'm out of here.